All right, for this pro tip, I'd like to introduce you to a very powerful concept in Excel. We're gonna talk about how to build and analyze relational data models in Excel. Now, Excel's data model is used for a number of different purposes. For one, you can compress extremely large amounts of data, hundreds of millions of rows, if not more. Second, you can create table relationships, which is a much, much more efficient and elegant way to blend data across tables or sources without manually stitching them together with cell formulas. And third, you can add brand new calculated columns and measures using a formula language called DAX, or Data Analysis Expressions. So there are a few ways to get data into the data model. The most common way is to create a new connection to a data source using a tool like Power Query, also known as Get Data or Get and Transform, and load straight from that connection into the model. A simpler way to add data to the model, um, especially for the sake of demonstration, is to take a table from a worksheet, which is generally a much smaller table, and click the Add to Data Model button within the Power Pivot tab. Now, this is a good point to pause and let you know that some versions of Excel will not have access to these data modeling tools. So if you don't see your Power Pivot tab, the first place to check is File, Options, Add-ins, and look for your COM add-ins specifically. If you still don't see Power Pivot there, I'd recommend Googling where is Power Pivot and you'll be taken to the Office Support website that looks like this. And here you'll actually see the exact Office products that do have access to these data modeling and Power Pivot tools. Now, assuming you do have access to the data model, once you've added your tables to the model, you'll be able to manage or edit your data model window and see a few different views like you see here. On the left, we have the diagram view, in which case we see our tables appear as individual objects, and that's where we can create the actual table relationships between them based on things called primary and foreign keys. On the right, we have our data view, which is a more traditional kind of tabular layout. But the beauty of the data model is that once these relationships are defined, once you've created what we call a relational data model, which for the purpose of this lecture, I'm defining as a group of related tables, then we can insert a pivot table to explore and analyze the data across all of these related sources in one single view. And that's why we call this a power pivot. It looks and feels exactly like a regular pivot table, but it's sitting on top of a data model. So common use cases here, combining information from multiple sources without actually mashing it together by merging or using functions like lookup or index. And two, this is the foundation for building robust business intelligence solutions that can integrate and blend data sources from all sorts of places like sales data, HR, finance, marketing, etc. So with that, let's jump into Excel. I'm going to run through an extremely quick, very brief demo to showcase some of what these data model and power pivot tools can do. All right, so if you're feeling brave and you'd like to follow along, head to your table of contents in your pro tip workbook. We're looking for the purple analytics tips here. And let's jump into the data modeling demo. It's a four star demo. We'll go ahead and link out to that sheet. And what we're looking at here is a table called transactions. We've got the transaction date, column A, We've got the product that was sold in column B, some information about the customer based on a customer ID here in column C, and then the actual values here, the quantity sold in column D. Now on its own, this table isn't very helpful to us. We could plug this into a pivot table and we could roll up the quantity or the sales, you know, for product IDs or customers or days. But what good does it really tell us that we sold product number 76 six times, right? We have no additional context about these IDs. So what we'd really like here are some lookup tables that could potentially map this product ID or this customer ID to additional dimensions or additional pieces of information that we can use to really learn more about these sales. And in fact, that's exactly what we have if we expand these group columns, you'll see we have three more tables. We've got a green table called products. We have an orange table called customers and a yellow table called calendar. Now, as you might expect, each of these tables includes an ID column or in the calendar case, 
a date column, which can map this information back to our transactions data in columns A through D. In other words, if we know the product ID, which we do, then by creating a connection or relationship to the product table, then we also know the product brand and the product name, as well as the retail price and cost. Same goes with the customer ID. That key can be used to pull in information about those customers, the names, the cities, the countries, marital status, gender, what kind of membership they have. All of that information can be tied into this transaction table because we have the key columns that can connect them. So you might be tempted to go ahead and start writing functions like VLOOKUP or index match to tie these together into a single master table. Because in old school Excel, we're used to needing a single table or single source for our pivot tables. That was always the one big limitation of pivots. So maybe you'd type, you know, a VLOOKUP here. We're looking up the product ID within our products table and grabbing the second column with an exact match. And boom, there we go. We have our product brand now in column E. So we've tied that product brand in to our transaction table. Now listen, we could continue this process to pull in product name, retail price, as well as all of the customer information and all of our calendar information as well. But there are two problems with that. Number one, what if these tables included hundreds of columns instead of just a handful like we have here? All of a sudden this approach isn't quite as scalable. And two, what we've created is a really inefficient table with a ton of duplicate values that simply aren't necessary. So let's go ahead and delete that column here. And I'm going to show you the more elegant, the more sophisticated approach to accomplish the same thing using the data model. So I've already added these tables to the data model, but if you'd like to practice yourself, you would select an individual table, drill into your power pivot tab, and click this add to data model button right here. Now, because I've already added them, we can go to our manage button, which will open up the data model window. Here we're in our data view by default. We can see these four tables in tabular format as separate tabs and diagram view, which actually shows each of our tables as an object on the canvas. Now you'll notice these lines connecting the tables represent relationships. So in this case, product ID, which is highlighted, is what connects products to transactions. We have our customer ID, which connects customers to transactions. And finally, we have our transaction date, which connects to the date field in our calendar table. Now to show you how to create these relationships from scratch, I'm going to head to the design tab here, manage relationships. And all we need to do is select these three relationships, press delete. Okay. And when we close that dialog box, now we'll see those tables kind of disconnected again. And all we need to do, it's as simple as grabbing the field we want and connecting it to a primary key within the lookup table. So transaction date to date, product ID to product ID, customer ID to customer ID. And it's as simple as that. In a matter of under 10 seconds, we've replicated all of the effort of creating those lookup or index functions to manually stitch that data together and we've accomplished the exact same result. And now here's the best part. If I head back into the Home tab here and insert a pivot table in a new worksheet, we'll press OK. Let's double click to name this tab something like Data Model Pivot. Here's the beauty of it. Now we're dealing with a power pivot, which is technically the same old pivot table layout just sitting on top of a data model and we have access to all of our data model tables, calendar, customers, products, and transactions, as well as other tables in the workbook, which in this case won't be helpful because there's no relationship defined between them. So if we drill into our transactions table, you'll see a few different measures here that I've defined, transactions, total quantity, and revenue. These were designed with a language called DAX, which is out of the scope of this course, but it's something that I do cover in my Power Query, Power Pivot, and DAX course. So let's grab total quantity, pull that into our values here. And now we can access any one of our other tables and break those quantities down in all different ways, like by product brand on rows, for instance. Here we can see that American product sold 1200, atomic product sold 695. We can grab a field from our customer table as well, like the customer city. 
drag that in as secondary row labels, pull product brand out. So as you can see, I'm manipulating this pivot exactly like I would manipulate any other pivot table in Excel. The only difference is that now I'm able to access fields across four different tables that are connected only with the relationships that we defined within the data model. Incredibly powerful stuff.